humane handling and animal transport practices are coming to the forefront in the beef industry. For several years, Jim Turner with North Carolina State University has been working with cattle producers across the country to improve their livestock transportation practices. Most cattle are hauled in a stock trailer at some point in their lifetime. Whether it be from farm to farm, pasture to pasture on the same operation, or from the farm to a, li a weekly livestock market. Before we start hauling cattle, we need to look at the truck that we're going to be using. In the owner's manual, there's two very important numbers to look at. The gross vehicle weight rating, which tells us the weight of the truck as well as its contents, and the gross combined weight rating, which is the weight of the trailer and the truck and their contents. We don't want to go past these numbers because when we overload, it's going to negatively impact handling of the truck. And it's also going to risk, increase our risk of accidents. When we overload, we also increase the strain on the engine, how much it has to pull, and it's going to increase our risk of breakdowns. And one thing we don't want to happen is have a breakdown when we're fully loaded with cattle. So we want to pay attention to these two important numbers before we start loading cattle. As we get ready to load cattle, we need to think about the load density. This is simply the number of head per square footage in the trailer that we're going to have. We want to make sure the cattle aren't in the trailer too tight. Because if they're too tight, they're not going to have room to move around or regain their footing if they should lose it. And also, if there's too few of animals on there, they're, not, they're going to get jostled around as the truck's going down the road. When we overload cattle, we're going to increase the uh, stress on them, which is going to increase sickness later on. We're also going to increase injury, everything from bruises to leg and hoof damage, and also death. We're going to possibly lose more cattle because of being overloaded. We have a bumper sticker that shows uh, the number of head that you can put on your trailer. It has more common sizes of trailers out there. If you need more information, we do have a website that has a fact sheet on it that you can go to. Also, we need to look at the axle rating of the trailer to make sure it can handle the load that you're wanting to put on it because not all trailers are created equally. This is an example of an overloaded trailer. It's obvious that the cattle are crammed in too tightly, that there's little room for them to move. If an animal slipped in this situation, there'd be no way it could regain its footing, exposing itself to injury from other animals. This is an example of a trailer that's loaded properly. As you can see, the cattle are more comfortable, have some room to move, and not so much room that they rattle around inside the trailer. These cattle have some mobility. If they fall, they can get up without being trampled on by the other animals, but they don't have too much room where they can move freely throughout the trailer and injure themselves. It's also important that you avoid mixing different types of cattle on your trailer. Don't put mature animals in the same trailer section as your calves. Don't put bulls in the same section together as they're gonna end up fighting and get injured. Use gates in your trailer to divide these animals up because larger animals can often injure and even kill smaller animals. Divide your cattle up by weight, age, and sex in the alleys before you begin loading. Another situation you can run into is needing to haul one or two animals in a large trailer, in which case you need to move the animals to the front compartment and shut the gate to restrict their space in the trailer. Prior to loading cattle, we need to evaluate them to make sure that they're fit to be loaded. Are they physically able to be hauled? Can they withstand being loaded and unloaded several times? Do they walk normally? and bear weight on all four legs? Do any animals have any health problems that are going to preclude them from being sold or being in the food supply? Has withdrawal time passed on any animal that's been treated? It's best not to haul cows that are in the late stages of pregnancy. It's going to put a lot of stress on the animals. And remember, we do not want to transport animals that have the potential to be downers. They're not going to be accepted at the market and they're not going to go into the food supply.